Hey guys, this is going to be a quick video on using the phone input widget because it makes it so much easier to collect user phone input using the phone input widget. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at how to set up the phone input widget. Now I'm also going to show you how to read data from the phone input widget. My name is Confident and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith. Without any delay, let's get started. So taking a look at the application we have on the canvas, we have a simple table that displays a user's name and phone. And we can go take a look at the query that is used to build this table. This is coming from the get users query and it's a simple select query based on the default or sample user table that is provided in AppSmith by default. So running this actually returns all of the user's name, um, ID and also phone. And we'll have that displayed right here on the table. So let's say we want to build a form that allows an admin update a user's phone number. How do we go about doing that? We need to create a form widget or we need to bring in a form widget and also use a phone input widget to do all of that. So let's go search for a form widget. And here we have the form widget. Uh, but I'm just going to quickly mention we also released the JSON form widget. So please go check that out if you haven't used this yet. But let's go ahead to bring in a form widget. So I'm just going to place a form widget here. Make sure it is um, nicely positioned. And then let's go grab in the phone input widget. All right, so here we have the phone input widget. Place it nicely here and expand it all the way. All right, so that's the phone input widget and we have the form almost completely built, but we need to configure the phone input widget a bit. So the property I'm going to be showing you first to start with the configuration of the phone input widget is the label. So you have the label property right here and you can go give this a label, for example, let's say phone, for example, and you can see that the label of the user's phone is shown up on the phone input widget. There are also other properties that need to be configured depending on how you want the phone input widgets to be used. So let's go take a look at some of these properties. The first being allow country code change. So by default, the phone input widget does not allow users to change or update the country code. Uh, you can see right now, if I go click on the country code, I can't change it as an end user. But I'm going to enable this in the development mode in your editor. Users will be able to click on the drop down, go select a new country, for example, and supply a new country code for the phone MP2 jet. So you can have this turned on in cases where you want users to be able to supply a new country code. You can also set a default country code for the phone input widget. So we have this property called default country code, and you can go here, set a default country code, for example, and that is the country code that would show up by default whenever the phone input widget is rendered. So let's head back and set this to United States. All right, so we have that set to United States by default. Next is the default text, and this will be the default phone number that shows up on the phone input widget. So we can type in something like 222222. And you can see that by default, um, if I go reload the application, by default, you would have this number being displayed on the phone input widget. So this might be useful if you want the phone input widget prefilled with a certain number. Um, you can do that using the default text. But since we want to be able to update the user's phone number from the table we have right here, what we can do is actually write a JavaScript binding to pull that information from the user selected on the table. So we can do something like table one, which is the name of the table widget, dot selected row, and we can do dot phone. And here we have the phone number of the user selected on the table shown up by default. All right, so this looks good. Um, next property I'm going to be showing you is enable formatting. And having this turned off, actually disables the formatting of the number supplied in the phone input widget. So for example, let's go take a look at the number um, of Sophia. If I go select this, you can see that we just have the number string inside of the phone input widget without any formatting. But heading back here and turning on formatting, you can see that this is formatted and it is easier for me to read as a human. So you might want to have this turned on. And for some of these properties, you can actually go write some JavaScript logic to evaluate when you want formatting to be on or off. All right, so moving on, we also have validations. 
which can be regex validations or javascript validations we actually made a detailed video on validations so i'm going to leave a link to the top corner right here so that you guys can go take a look at it and see how to configure validations for the phone input widget so that's about some of the properties of the phone input widget i'm sure you'll be able to go through the other ones and figure it out so let's talk about how to read data from the phone input widget and to show you how to do this i'm just going to bring in a quick text widget for debugging purposes so let's bring in a text widget all right i hope you're able to see this okay i think i can scroll down a bit okay so let's move this up a bit all right here we have a text widget below the form and i'm going to use this to show you some of the properties that can be read from the phone input widget so let's go in to do that so to read properties from the phone input widget, you need to write JavaScript using the mustache binding and then type in the widget's name, which in this case is the phone input widget. And I'm just going to do a dot right here. And here we have the autocomplete telling us what properties can be read from the phone input widget. So we have the country code, we have the DAO code, we have is disabled, we have is valid, we have is visible, we have text and we also have value. Now we can go ahead to take a look at the country code. So let's do phoneimpute code, And you can see right here that the country code evaluates to US and that's the exact country code selected in the phone input widget. Now we can go read some other properties like the DAO code, for example, and you can see this evaluates to plus one. So these are some of the metadata information around a phone number that you might want to collect and save. And you can read all of these properties by taking a look at the phone input widgets, country code, and also the dial code. Now, stepping back a bit, we have two other properties that are very important also. You have the text property and you also have the value property. And the difference between a text property and the value property is that the text property keeps the formatting of the number entered into the phone input widget, whereas the value property actually discards all of those formatting. So I'm just going to show you this. So let's do phone input one dot text. And you can see that the formatting is preserved right here. You can see we have the formatting right here. But if we go check out the value, for example, so this is phone input one dot value, you can see that we have no formatting at all right here. So this might be something you want in certain cases. Um, all of these options are available to you right here on the phone input widget. So now that we've taken a look at how to read data from the phone input widget, let's actually write a query that will go update the user's phone number given the number supplied in the phone input widget. So let's quickly do that. I'm going to head to the um, user's table and here we have the user's table opened up. So I can use the add button to start up a query template and this is going to be an update template. All right, so let's call this update phone. All right, so let's go into edit this a bit because we are only going to be updating the user's phone number. All right, and that looks good. And here we need to add a where condition. So let's say where the ID equals to the ID of the user selected from your table. So this is going to be table one dot selected row dot ID. And then for the phone, we can actually pull that from the phone input widget. So this is going to be phone input one dot text. And we have both of those informations um, taken. But right now, because we have prepared statements turned on, we are not able to see what it evaluates to because you have variables used right here, as you can see. So I'm going to turn off prepared statements, but please make sure you have prepared statements turned on so that you can protect yourself from things like SQL injection. But let's just turn this off so that you're able to take a look at this query. And you can see that from this query, we're actually pulling out the phone entered by the user from the phone input widget. I also have the ID evaluated to three. So let's go turn back uh, prepared statement on and heading back to the form, we can update um, Sophia's phone number from, let's select Sophia and update this from 40 to 41, for example. Uh, then let's also set the submit button to actually go execute that query. So when we click on the submit button, what we want to do is execute the update phone query and make sure we also call the get users query when that is successful so that we have the application updated. Now we've set Sophia's phone number, the last digits from zero to one. So let's 
click on the submit button and we should have that update made and you can see that that number is updated and the formatting is preserved. So this has been a quick video on using the font input widget. I hope you found this helpful. Now we've made a video on using the input widget and setting up validations. So I'm going to leave a video link right here so that you can go check out how to set up validations, custom validations for the input widget and also for the font input widget. You could also check out this video on using the table widget because we actually also use the table widget. So go check out this video on using the table widget so that you can learn more on using the table widget. The links to both of these videos will be down in the description so that you can easily access them. All right, that'll be all for today's video. Till I see you next time. Take care, have a nice day, bye-bye.